In this video, we're going to use the uh, TI 30X Pro math print to do a sample standard deviation. I'll just call it a standard deviation. Here's the formula over here, which you might be familiar. And we're going to do the standard deviation by hand and also show you how to use the calculator to find the answer. Um, all right. So in this way, um, you have to write all the numbers out, even the ones that repeat. And what you need to do here in the formula is that you need to find the mean. Okay, so we're going to turn this on. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go press data. We might have data points in our three lists. That's, that's all I, they give us, three lists. So we can press data again, and we can go all the way down to number four. So we can press four, and it clears all the information on the list. It's kind of like an Excel sheet, sort of. Um, okay, so we're going to, uh, so on L1, right, we're going to type in 1, enter, 2, enter, 3, enter, 4, enter, 5, enter. Okay, so this is one variable, right, and we can do a one variable statistic. So if we press uh, second data, we can go to one variable stats, which is number 2, or we can use the D-pad to move it down and then press enter. And it says here, one variable statistics, okay, data, L1, frequency uh, is going to be one. There is no frequency. And then we enter, enter, and then we enter again, and it gives us this information. As you can see, N is equal to five, okay, and uh, so N is equal to five, so this is from the calculator. Um, X bar is three. The standard deviation, which is what we want, is 1.5811. And if we scroll down more, we can find also sigma x, which is not this video, but if you need it, sigma x is the population standard deviation, which is a very similar formula. Instead of n take away 1, it would just be n. So you found the mean and the standard deviation on the TI-30X Pro. Um, and now that could be it. You, if you scroll down, it gives you the sum of x as well. The sum of x. We'll talk about that as well. Okay, so let's second quit. Um, and we're doing this by hand, and we need to find the mean because the formula has the mean. So the mean is going to be the sum of x divided by n. So that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them, right? The sum is 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, over 5. 5 goes into 15 three times. As you can see, the sum of x, the calculator gave it to us, right? Which is over here, too. The sum of x, right, is equal to 15. Okay. So x bar is 3, that's correct, from the calculator. The calculator really is to check for your understanding, to see if you get this right by hand. So here, this column here, there's three columns, okay? And it tells us what we need to do next. It says, take your uh, value, right, 1, and subtract it from the mean, which is 3. Um, we can use your calculator, 1, take away 3, enter gives you negative 2. And now, what we can do is we can do them all right now, or we can move on and square it, because I already have the number here, right? If I square this, it gives you 4. Okay? Negative 2 times negative 2 gives you 4. Let's do the next one. 2 take away 3, right? 2 take away 3. Enter, and then that's going to give you negative 1. Then you square it. Right? Enter, 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. Now, be aware that, you know, your teacher might not want you to do it this way by hand. All right? So, you have to ask. 3 take away 3, right, is going to be 0, right? 3 take away 3, 0. And when you square 0, what do you get? 0. Okay? 4 take away 3 is going to give you 1, right? 4, take away 3. 
give you one, and then when you square it, gives you one. And then five take away three equals what? Two, five take away three, enter, gives you two, and then when you square it, it's four. Now, keep in mind also that you might think all oh, these numbers look easy. It's not that easy. It is. The, even if it had decimal places and all that, um, your calculator can still help you do the mathematics. Um, another thing, too, to keep in mind is that this is, this is really a stepwise type um, process. So if you keep with these steps, you'll be fine. Okay? Okay. So now... This column here, right, this will sum, right, xi minus x bar. This should sum to approximately zero. In this case, it will be zero, right? Negative two, take away one, plus zero, plus one, plus two, okay? This column, it'll get to zero if you include all the numbers. That's another thing, too. When you're doing these calculations, like x, <clears throat> xi take away x bar, and if you, if you have numbers after the decimal place, write as many numbers as you can. Three is great. Four is even better. Why? The more numbers you keep in your calculation, the better the answer will be from the calculator. A few, other, few things to consider. Depending, your teacher might say, you know what? Just use two, two numbers after the decimal place, okay. Or you might be in a chemistry class where significant digits are important, so you're gonna to have to consider that as well. Either case, <clears throat> you need to think about, um, you know, how many numbers should I put after the decimal place? Here, we don't have any because this is a very simple problem. Um, okay, so what about the sums here? Oh, okay, what's the sum of x minus x bar squared, right? And we could put a little i here if we want, meaning every individual point. Okay, we can say four plus, yes, you can use your fingers, plus one, plus zero, plus one, plus four. And some of you will be like, oh, I know how to do that. I know you do. 10, okay, sum of 10. So you got the sum of each column. This column should be very close to zero. Um, how close? Uh, close enough so that it wouldn't be a big difference. Like, if, if this was 0 0.15, it might be okay. But if your sum is like 1.3 or 2.8 or something, no, that's too, too much. Your teacher will tell you um, how much difference. I know that some of you will say the advantage of doing this one big line the calculator will completely uh, take care of all those numbers. That's true. But a lot of times in some statistics classes, even in college classes, they want you to do it by hand. If you like this content, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please tell your friends. Uh, please tell your teacher about the video. All right. Now we're going to use our... Sometimes it's S of X because we're using um, the X variable. So we can put an SX there. Um, so the sum of x take away, the sum of parentheses x minus x bar uh, parentheses squared, right? If we look over here, it's 10. Divided by n, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Take away 1. A lot of students forget to put the square root back. Okay. So that's 10, uh, 5, right? If you don't know, let's do it. 5 take away 1 is... You know, 4, take the square root, right? So we can say 10 divided by 4, enter. And then we can say second square root of what? Of the answer. So we you look over here, this answer, second answer from the previous answer, right? So the square root of 2.5, that's equal to 1.5811, which is exactly what the calculator told us. That's really neat, isn't it? That's, that's really nice. We got the same answer. Some of you might need what they call the variance. 
the variance, right? And that is this number right here, 2.5, okay? It's the square of the square root value. Um, so that's going to be 2.5. Um, a few other things that might happen, okay? Um, like, for example, this negative 2. If you just take negative 2 and you square it, okay, it gives you negative 4 as an answer when you square this, which we know uh, we want um, negative 2 times negative 2, which gives us positive 4. So the problem here is that negative 2, when you square it, right, might be a problem that looks like this. And so you get 5, take away, and then 2 squared is 4, gives you an answer of 1. See, if you do 5, right, minus 2 squared, enter, gives you 1. So the calculator is trying to figure out um, what that answer is um, algebraically. So if you type in, again, a number like nine, negative 9, let's say negative 9.25 and you square it, it's going to give you a negative answer. These values right here should be um, positive because we're squaring it. Okay, now here's some more. Hopefully you're still watching. Um, if you press data, okay, you see you have these values here, right? Can we calculate these columns? We can. So let's do that. Let's calculate these columns. And um, what we want to do is we want to push over to L2 and then we press data uh, and then go, go over here to formula and then we want to add edit formula. Okay. What happens is now this is highlighted. It's telling the calculator, or telling the calculator here, I want a formula using the list to create a new list. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, this is, if you remember, this is L1, this is L2, this is L3. So we're going to take L1 information, we're going to take L1 information and subtract it from 3. So, how do you get L1 in here? We press data, and then we press number 1. L1, take away what? 3. And we enter. It fills it all up. Boom. Look at that. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Isn't that nice? Very nice. And now to fill this column, right, we go over to the other side. Okay. And we'll press data, then move it over to formula, number one, add, edit, okay. What are we going to do? We're going to take L2, we press data again. I know that's many steps. Go to L2 and then square it. I know that that's a lot of steps, but the more you try, the better you'll get. And then enter. 4, 1, 0, 1, and 4. Just like that. Now we can quit here. You see, remember these sums that we needed? We can take L2, use one variable statistics, and find the sum. If we do that, check this out. If we go second data, we go one variable statistics, we go on the second list, one for no frequency, enter. You'll see that the sum, oh, this says L1. Okay, let's try that again. Second, data, one variable, stats. Let's go to two, okay, enter, enter. Okay, there we go. And then if we scroll down, the sum is zero, see? The sum is zero. So is the average, by the way. And then this column right here, you go second data, right? 
we still go to one variable statistics. This way, we go to the third column, all right? And then we, we have to enter, okay? And then enter again, enter again. And then we scroll down and we get a sum of 10, which is this column right here. Now, that might sound like, oh, that's too many steps, who cares? I can count it with my fingers. But imagine if it was like many, like let's say 10, right, numbers. And this column right here is very busy, and so is this one. You can, you know, maybe you, you might skip something in adding. This is just to double check to see if this sum is correct. Yes, sum of x does not say xi minus x, x bar squared. You have to keep that in mind. We're doing L3, and it does say L3 right here. It says comma 1 because there's no frequency to it. Okay, that was a lot of info. You can always go back um, on, on this video. Watch it again. Take your time. Uh, it takes a little while to, to get this right, but it's, but it's a very fascinating idea, actually, about standard deviation, right? It's the, the definition is really the deviation from the mean, the, the data points, you know, how far away are the data points from the mean? The farther they are, the larger your standard deviation, which means that your data points are not consistent to being close to the mean. Um, all right. I hope you have a great uh, semester. Share this with your friends. Please give it a thumbs up. Um, uh, give it a like. Also, uh, give, it, uh, give it to your teacher. Give it to your friends. I hope you have a great semester again. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.